Today is the day that we absolutely have to turn this round if we're to have any resemblance of a successful season whatsoever. And if we want to keep our job. 59 is my manager rating, the lowest it's been throughout the entirety of the whole save, I believe, so far. We have played seven games in the Premier League. We have won a single point on opening match day against Crystal Palace and have since lost six straight games. We've only scored four goals in those seven games and we've conceded 16. So I think it's pretty obvious what's going wrong. We're not scoring and we're conceding too many. Let's uh, let's address that today, shall we? We have reverted back to uh, a similar formation to one we were playing last season that was so successful for us. Malik Wilkes is now leading the line up top uh, with Pinto wide right, Wallace and Sangare in the midfield, Lewis Potter on the left, and of course Charlie Barnett sat behind in that centre forward role. Well, I think actually in this particular formation he has to sit as a can, but he's still getting some decent boosts, so uh, we'll be happy enough with that for now. Uh, you can see, obviously, on the bench, everyone is uh, is relatively uh, sharp, apart from uh, apart from DeAndre Yedlin. Morale-wise, it's a bit all over the place, but that's mainly due to uh, the performance of the club in the league. You guys uh, did ask me to sort out a number of contracts, uh, which I have done. Uh, I've gone through and I've offered contracts to everybody that was unhappy, and as a result. We now have no money left. So January is probably going to be a bit of a non-event unless we end up selling someone. Uh, at this stage, I don't think I'm going to sell anyone, but we'll have to wait and see how things transpire. Uh, mm. Basically, it was just people that... Oh, I had previously offered contracts to people when we were in the championship and boosted their wages uh, considerably in a number of cases, but now we're Premier League, they basically all wanted double the wages they were on. So, uh, my money is gone. We'll start with this Fulham game today uh, at home. Desperate to get the first win of the season. We then got Burnley away, Brighton at home and Arsenal away. Burnley at home is probably the one that I'm going to simulate today. There's an international break uh, at the end of this week. And good news, Charlie Barnett has been called up by the England squad. So, delighted for him. But I'd be more delighted if he could help us win our first game of the season, please. I want to get off the bottom of the table today. And I'm pretty desperate to do it. Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Make sure you continue to leave me your feedback in the comment section down below. It is certainly making a difference. And hopefully we can make a difference on the field today in this episode. For basically the first time this season. Here we go. Rodek in goal for Fulham. Patrick Burner, Michael Hector, Adarabioyo and Robinson at the back. Seri and Goriore. Go mm, yep. Antigone Knocker, Joe Willock, Munir up top. Who was it that was on the left? It was Mertens. And uh, Goriaran, it is, on the, uh, <sighs> in the midfield with Jean-Michel Seri. It's a name I couldn't quite uh, read as quickly as I needed to. Uh, a bit of, uh, no, it's not really a kick clash, is it? Orange versus yellow. But uh, a number of today's opponents also having a poor season. Burnley and Brighton are in the bottom five. Don't know where Fulham are, but just in general, Fulham as a club... Traditionally, recently, haven't had the best of teams at Premier League level, so I imagine that we're probably better than them on paper. But we've been better than almost everybody on paper we've played so far this year, at least half our opponents anyway. Will Wilkes, off to a great start. That gives me faith that we might well have made the right decisions in turning the corner. It's had an immediate effect. Hull 1, Fulham 0. Other than Liverpool... Manchester United and Chelsea. We've played three of the big sides already in the opening seven, which is obviously a big factor in why we are where we are as well. We're stronger on paper than the other four sides we've played, really. Should have gotten victories in a number of those games. Haven't. We've got trounced in a number of those games, actually. But the change we've made to the formation, putting Malik Wilkes up top at your guys' request as well, looks like... It may well have worked, although let's perhaps not jump the gun. It has only been 10 minutes of game number one. Willock on the run. Has the support of Mertens out wide. They are with him. Here's Joe Willock again. Back out towards Mertens. Found well. Driving on. And he... Oh, I thought for a minute there. He'd just take the ball off the field. Here's Meunier. Come back to Mertens. I thought we were going to play the ball to the man that was making the run through. Oh, Jesus. It keeps double-changing player for me. That just hit Callum Elder. 
I was in control of Reese Burke. That just hit Callum Elder and went out for a corner. That could have been awkward. Knockout to deliver it into the middle. It's whipped well. Up we go, please. Well up, Reese. Falls to Jean-Michel Serri. Could wind up for a shot here from distance. Lex not to. Elder involved defensively again. We're not having as much of an impact on this occasion. Munir back out to Berner. Sangari going to try and close the right back down. It's a lovely ball in. One man's in the way. Second man's in the way. Long's there to punch clear. And we have survived. Although that was particularly worrisome. But we've survived. As Derek Ray says. And now Keen Lewis Potter is in behind. It's going to be a tight angle. And Rodak makes a comfortable enough save. Was always favourite in that situation, the goalkeeper. But... Still, decent chance on the breakaway, and that's the sort of thing that we were doing last season with Keane Lewis Potter. So it appears that we've returned to playing the way we used to, and Charlie Barnett is oops off the mark for the Premier League. Oh yes, this is the hole we know and love. This is the hole we know and love. Brilliant effort from Charlie Barnett's left foot. Certainly worth another watch. They didn't close him down. They left him on his own, and you cannot do that. To Charles Barnett. He will bury it. His first goal in the Premier League to celebrate his first England call up later in the week. What a way to start the episode. Burner. Down the wing. They called him Burner. Or Burner. Maybe he's not English. Maybe it's not pronounced Burner. His Mertens into Munier. That's definitely pronounced Munier. Stir you with two blocks, and he's very pleased with himself, as well he should be. Knock out with another corner for Fulham. This one better delivered. That's dangerous. Oh, Reese Burke's done well, actually. I didn't feel like he was favourite to win that when it was on its way towards the box. Got Ah, oh, he's run around me. No! Munir does get one back. <sighs> Still leaky at the back, but at least goals are going in at the other end to try and counter that now. Wilkes. Back to Sangari. Look at the run Charlie Barnett's making. Oh, he's gotten a little bit fortunate. But we'll take it and we'll keep coming. Barnett back to Wallace. Just trying to keep possession away from the Fulham defenders. Now they've backed off Malik Wilkes. Well, you see one fly top bins from there. Wilkes trying to replicate Charlie Barnett's effort. He did well. It was well struck cleanly and hard. But unfortunately straight at the keeper. We are going to be 2-1 up at half time. So, I mean, that's better than we've had in any game at all so far this season. So I'll take that. An hour played. Knockhart going off. And oh, I couldn't see who was coming on actually. Munir is going to take this free kick. Good position to shoot. He's going to lay it off. It's Santos that's come off. Uh, sorry, come on for Knockhart. That's comfortable enough for George Long. Comfortable enough. Okay, happy with that. Bowl it out to the left back. Okay, Nuno Santos uh, intercepts. Lovely, wonderful, superb. Please don't cross and score. That would really um, make me quite sad. Here's Burna to Nuno Santos. I think I'm just going to still call him Burna, to be honest. Can I have the ball back, please? Oh, 71, but there you go. Burna. Just says Burna, mate. There's no accents. Get out! No! Oh! Gary Aron with a brilliant opportunity to equalise for Fulham. Again, Bayer failing aerially. Which is probably a reason, another reason, why we should keep him as a right-back and not move him to centre-back. Because he does, doesn't seem to have it in the in the air in those physical battles. Kamara coming on for Fulham in the last 10 minutes. Joe Willock leaving the field of play. Willock's been decent for them. A player that we looked at in uh, in pre-season. A player that with the stat set, had I been looking for a cam, I may well have gone for. But he just didn't suit the role that we were looking for. That's a lovely ball. It's well punched by Rodak and really well dealt with by Gori Arendt. And Seri will play that forward into Munir. And they're on the counter-attack. He'll try and step just to play that man offside. Still got a man free on this near side that they could use on the overlap. Cadet offside. Oh, good. Trying my best here to uh, maintain this 2-1 lead despite the fact that I've not really had many chances going forward at all in this second half to give ourselves a little bit of breathing room. And Fulham have had a lot of the ball in this whole game, let alone just this second half. But... There's not long left to go. And I'm... Oh, is that a free kick? It is. I might take that free kick if the referee will give it to me. No. Okay. Oh, I'm so nervous just trying to hold on to this. This feels more like football manager than it does FIFA, where I'm not in control. Ivan Tony around the corner to Lewis Potter. I'll pull that back to Ivan Tony, And he nearly seals it. Decent effort. We'll whip it towards the edge of the six-yard box where he would be. It's going to fall to Dean Garner. And Dean Garner will let fly. 
Oh my god. This deserves the wild celebrations at the end of the game. That is how you win a game in the Premier League. That is how you win your first game of the season in the Premier League at the eighth attempt. Hull City have arrived on the top stage. Wow. I just hit that. Because I thought the ref was going to blow his final whistle. So I thought, kick it. If it gets blocked, then it gets blocked. And it'll, if the keeper saves it, he saves it. Oh my god, Dian Garner, what a rocket! I can't quite believe that. If you haven't liked the video already, I think that deserves it. Jesus Christ, Grady! Where has that come from? His second goal of the season. It's his best goal of his career. 3-1 Hull. We win in the Premier League, and what a way to win it too. Burnley, Nick Pope, still in goal for them. Vic Tildinho, Mavrapanos, Montez and Maxwell Corner. Maxwell Corner at left back. Veerman, Brownhill, Pereira and McNeil. Mustafa Mohamed and Carlos Fernandez up top. That is a very unfamiliar looking Burnley side. Maxwell Corner at left back. Former Cambridge United man, Will Norris on the bench there I saw. Can Corner play at left back? I thought Maxwell Corney was a right winger. Ah. He can play at left back, apparently. Apparently, by default, he is a left back this year. Left back, left wing back, and left wing. Well, I stand corrected. Who knew? For clarity, uh, one change for this side. Dean Garner, I think, probably earned the start after that banger. So he's in for Keen Lewis Potter, who drops to the bench. Here's McNeil. Into Carlos Fernandez. Yes, Rhys Burke. Oh, come on. That's not a foul, is it, really? He's just out-muscled him. Veerman with the free kick. It's a good place to shoot. He's not. He's played. Oh, a lovely ball into Danilo Pereira, who draws a save out of George Long. Wearing the captain's armband for Burnley today, Danilo Pereira. Dwight McNeil from the far side. One of the few Burnley originals still in this side. And Carlos Fernandez only just past the post with the head up Burnley creating chances from set pieces this feels like real life Burnley not scoring many goals this feels like real life I saw the uh, league table the other day and Burnley have scored 9 goals in like 16 games they are not in real life that good at creating opportunities or at least putting them away but somehow they still have 4 wins and 4 draws in the Premier League this season don't ask me how. Carlos Fernandez over the top to Maxwell Corne. Well, he's at left back, but... Oh, pushing forward into that left wing role. Well, I thought he used to play. And a good save by George Long, to be fair. I thought Maxwell Corne played right wing, not left wing. But still, I thought he was an attacker, not a defender. And doing some attacking there. But thankfully, we've dealt with everything Burnley have thrown at us so far. But they are throwing quite a bit at me. And if they continue to do so, it's only a matter of time before our back line eventually cracks. Here's McNeil. Yes, Reese Burke. Outmuscle him. Well done. I'll go to the keeper and then we'll just get rid of it. Oh, turn on it. Yes, come on then. Mistake from Danilo Pereira. The captain threw himself to ground and that might have been the worst thing he could possibly have done in that situation. Pinto across here to Ross, to Rob Wallace, not Ross Wallace. Dian Garner on his left foot. Oh, that was on target. Needed saving by Nick Pope, but it was pretty comfortable for him. Yes, Callum. Lovely interception. Dian Garner. First time looking for Barnett. Finding Wilkes. Rob Wallace is there. That's who the pass was intended for. It went to Sangari. Barnett's calling for it. Wilkes. Oh, through looking for Pinto, but didn't quite find him. No goals yet, but both sides trying really hard to get that first goal. But just lacking a bit of quality so far. Barnett. We will work this out wide here to Dian Garner. And I could drill this into the middle. It's floated instead. Wallace. Ah. <sighs> no. It's Josh Brownhill. Rhys Burke closes him down quickly. Now, we could take the lead here at the end of the first half if Pinto's touch is good enough. Maxwell Corne is so quick. So quick. Wow. Pinto is one of the fastest players in our team now, and he just could not get away from Maxwell Corne. And Dwight McNeil could be in at the other end, and he may even be Burnley taking the lead at the end of the half. Tackled by Bayer. Fearman trying to turn. I oh, dangled a leg, and I perhaps shouldn't have done. Win that header, please. Stay, who does really well. Out to Corne still. That's a really good ball in. And Wiesberg flicks away. And the clearance is complete. And at half time, it's nil nil against Burnley. And actually, it's been quite an open, flowing game. 
What something I didn't expect from a game against Burnley. They had the two set piece chances, which I did expect. But we've held our own defensively so far. We are yet to keep a clean sheet this Premier League season, but we're halfway towards our first. Here's Mohamed. Oh, it's loose from Burnley. Pinto has to recover possession, but does so nicely. Wallace will just try and hold off the attentions of one man. Feed the ball to Sangari Bennett. Nice run, and I think he's just on side here, Grady Diangana, and he's in the box. It's a tight angle, but Grady Diangana is in great form right now and will not be stopped. Hull City 1, Burnley 0. One of our only two signings so far this season. And well worth every penny so far, Grady Diangana. Bang. His left foot's pretty damn good, it seems. Keen Lewis Potter's not been firing recently. Grady Diangana, at the minute, is justifiably keeping him out of the team. Lewis Potter in a good position. And Bayard's on the overlap here. There is time for a second. But do we do what we did against Fulham and just trying to hold, try and hold on to what we've got? Doherty, back to Sangari. Malik Wilkes. We've got a lot of men back here, Burnley. So, I'm not... Overly worried about the counter. Should they win it off me? Lovely turn by Diangana. Completely sold the defender. Whipped in looking for Keen Lewis Potter at the back post, but given away. Said I wasn't overly concerned about the counter attack. Well, here one comes. Sakanyi played in. He's got runners. Rodriguez. Oh, it's loose and might cost them. Sakanyi has the overlapping run here from Maxwell Corne. Brilliant ball in. Stay you calm as you like. Leonidas. Calm as you like. Banged out by George Long. And not only have we won one game today, we've won back-to-back -back games in the Premier League. That's what we should have been doing so far this season. Neither game has been straightforward. Both games have been difficult. Both games, we've had to work very, very hard to ensure that we can get something from it. And thankfully, we've gotten victories in both. We are out of the relegation zone with those back-to-back -back victories. Up to 17th. Getting dizzy. We're so high in the table. Ah, <sighs> Come on. That's good. Right. Brighton at home next. Brady Diangana has asked to play in this game, but because it's a sim, I'm going to leave the higher rated Lewis Potter in the starting lineup. It should be a pretty straightforward win. Burnley, uh, Burnley. Brighton are bottom of the table and will stay there. Three straight wins. A hat-trick for Keen Lewis Potter. Well, he's responded then, hasn't he, to Grady D. Angana's... Uh, <laughs> you need more games, do you? Not playing is good for you. Are you still in our squad, Grady? Don't worry. Still an important play for us. We're up to the 13th now. Still very early days in the league season, of course, where there's not many points separating a number of sides. But this run of form hopefully can continue. Now I'm a little bit stuck at the minute. Both Grady Diangana and Lewis Potter in good form. I'm not sure what return we've had from Pinto on the right-hand side. I might have to double-check. Maybe I drop Pinto and play Diangana and uh, Brady in the same in the same fixture. Let's have a look. What have we been getting for returns from uh, Leonardo Pinto? At well, default cam, but out on the right-hand side. One goal, two assists. Barnett's got five assists, two goals. Lewis Potter now with five goals, but obviously that's thanks to that hat-trick. Diangana with three goals in five games. I would keep Diangana in the starting lineup ahead of Lewis Potter, but obviously um, with Lewis Potter having scored a hat-trick in the last game, I can't really drop him, but... I think, I think it means that Diangana and Lewis Potter need to be both in the uh, in the side at the same time. So that's what we'll do in the next one against Arsenal. We'll drop Pinto for a little bit, perhaps just for the one game, and see what Grady Diangana can do on the wing on this side. All right, uh, 83 now, Barnett actually 85. Lewis Potter. Uh, Sturiu 82, Wallace 78, Sangari still 80, no, up to 82, so growth, Elder up to 81, Long up to 77, yeah, there's been a lot of growth, actually, that I hadn't actually seen. Well, there you can see start Arsenal starting line up, Martinelli on the left, smith on the right, Dembele, Musa Dembele at striker, who in real life is on his way to Atletico Madrid, Genduzi and presumably Thomas Muller in the middle, 
Tierney, Fernandez, Senesi, Mary, Maitland Niles, and Burnt Leno. Right, straight to the action then at the Emirates. And forward inside to Malik Wilkes. On the counter attack here, can it work for us? Wilkes has kept the run going. That's going to go towards Diangana though. And Tierney will head behind for a throw to us. No chances yet after half an hour. Still waiting for the first shot. Wallace can get this into Wilkes though. And quickly to Barnett is well picked off by Senesi though. That's annoying. Who is Senesi by the way? I don't recognise that name. I don't recognise that name. Marcos Senesi. Who does he play for? Senesi. Marcos Senesi plays for Feyenoord. An Argentinian. He's 77 by default. But has grown here to 84 in this save. And has potential of 86. 23-year-old centre-back that I've not heard of, really. Nor have I seen him in comment sections before. Interesting. Seems like the sort of player that would get mentioned, to be fair. Growing as well as he supposedly does. In three and a bit seasons, he's grown from 77 to 84. Maybe he's a player we could use in a, in a latter save. Maybe uh, later in this save, perhaps. If we find ourselves in the position looking for a centre-back. And his stats look decent. We'll certainly have to try and remember him. You guys will probably be more likely to remember him than I will. So do keep that in mind. Charlie Barnett, though, on his right foot. Mm, probably should have shot there, but I didn't fancy it for some reason. Wallace, Barnett, Wallace, Diangana. Wasted. Oh, come on, Chase. Got to be more clinical than that. I've got two on the far side to play in on the overlap. Diangana looking for Wilkes. Mallet Wilkes, surely, yes. Thumped home. All he needed to do was make sure he got the turn in and had a little bit of space. And he's done that wonderfully. We have ourselves a 1-0 lead down in North London. And this could be a remarkable episode where we go seven games without a win and then four straight victories. Across to Sangare. Mm, that was an awkward touch. And just as they're talking about us struggling with possession, you can see why we might well be struggling with possession with mistakes like that creeping in. If we can end the game the way we ended the first half, then we should be on for that fourth straight victory. And it just, it's not a foul, is it? Oh, it's just on the edge of the box. Lamer off the bench to probably lift this into the middle rather than shoot, which he does do well. Tierney with a header, Cannon's back off a defender. Maitland Niles turns well. Don't dive in now, Chez. I literally just ran at him then. Still, you put the challenge in of his own accord. Actually, look at that on the right hand side. Space. Diangana, lovely touch. Kirantini's probably got the pace to deal with it, though, so we'll cut back. Today's episode just goes to show exactly why I play a 4-3-3 attack or a 4-2-3-1 of some sort. Keepers come for that, and that is a big big mistake, but Senesi off the line. Wow, very nearly 2-0 and game over. But as I was saying, like it, it's clearly been the formation that was the problem for us this season. Because I went seven games with a single point. I changed back to the formation that I'm more familiar with. That I feel that works better for me. And the formation that got us promoted on two occasions. And hey look, we're back winning games again. I know it can get slightly boring at times if you guys continue to see me play a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. But I'm afraid as the evidence shows in today's episode, it's just the best way for me to get the best results. We're still 1-0 one up, one up here. Senesi has gone off now. I didn't actually see who'd come on in his place. Dan Garner back to Sangare. Wilkes. Five out on goal. Ben Leno with a save again. We're continuing to put the pressure on here. Giovanni scored an absolutely stunning free kick here back in the day for Hull to win at the Emirates. I'm pretty sure it was against Arsenal. When they first came to the Premier League... Back in the was it early to mid 2000s, Martinelli driving down the line here, showing some good footwork, but he needs the support. Ten minutes to go. We've held on well so far. Are we on for a clean sheet? As things stand, we're going to need a clean sheet if we're to get the victory because we've only got the one goal. Tierney played around the corner, lofted in, stare you with the header, and away goes the ball. And again, might be time to try and shut up shop. Or play Mallet Wilkes through to score another. He's in. I fancy him on his left foot here. There you go. 
Hull 2, Arsenal nil. We are back. Lima slowed down, lofted into the middle again, and away again by Sturyu. And that, as I'm going to hoof this out, bang, will be game. Four straight wins. It, I'm, I don't know whether I'm delighted with that or perhaps slightly ashamed that I can only play football or I can only play FIFA in a couple of select formations. And if I play any, any other system, I'm not very good. I don't really know what to make of it, to be honest. Malik, you've been brilliant for us so far this season, my man. Progress assessment. Uh, oh, what did they want? Oh, it was the Youth Academy one. Eh, meh, don't care. Uh, we don't have any money left now anyway, so I can't sign many players. Oh, dear me. Hmm. So up, not only up off the bottom, into 10th. We're in the top half now with for those four straight wins. It was one draw, six defeats. Now it's four wins, one draw, six defeats. Still, our goal difference is in the minus. But Brighton, rock solid, or sorry, rock bottom of the table. Uh, not rock solid at all. There is a bit of a gap, though, isn't there, between us and those above us. So we're probably best of the rest with regards to those challenging for the European spots. There's like nine sides challenging for the top five positions, and then there's the rest of us. And at the minute, we are the best of the rest of them. So uh, hopefully we can continue that on in tomorrow's episode, where we've Bournemouth, Villa, Everton, and Wolves. No FA Cup games on the horizon until, of course, uh, the month of January. So uh, we look very good right now. Oh, who knew? To be fair, I kind of, I kind of suspected that it was me just being rubbish with that formation that was the problem. It, we tried to set it up so that it wasn't too dissimilar. With obviously Pinto sat slightly forward, a cam in central, and uh, Sangari slightly deeper, and then Wallace there as well, and the two wingers tucked in a bit. But evidently, that's the future, because. Well, it couldn't have worked any better today, could it? Absolutely superb. And that thunderbolt from Dian Garner against Fulham really set us up well for the rest of the episode, didn't it? Deary me. Malik Wilkes stepping up well, actually. I wonder who's my top goal scorer now. Let's have a look, shall we? Malik Wilkes has certainly scored quite well today. Dian Garner still with uh, three. And Wilkes has nine in 15, although six in 11 in the Premier League. Six in 11. He stepped up. Keen Lewis Potter with 3 and 11. Diangana with 3 and 6 and an assist now. And Barnett with one goal, three assists in 11 games. Not quite as prolific a season for Charlie Barnett so far, but there's still time for him to grow. And uh, time for me to uh, have a nap, maybe? Jesus Christ. Uh, right, that'll be all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Do drop the video a like if you haven't already. And subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on any more of our debut Premier League season. It's a It'd be a tough ask to get a European spot so far this year. I'm quite happy with being 10th right now in our first year, first year in the Premier League. We don't have any money currently to spend on anyone else anyway. So this is probably how the squad is going to look for the rest of this first season. Although if we get a big bid in January, then we might have to consider something. But for now, very happy with how things are. Certainly a lot happier than I was in the last episode anyway. And uh, if we, we'll see if this is a one-off or if we can keep it going tomorrow. And I'll see you in that one then. Bye-bye.